Hello, Nintendo Wii here. Welcome back to Let's Play Retro Games. And welcome to my 4K tour of the London gaming market. I was there yesterday and I managed to get a load of footage using my iPhone in 4K, so if you've got the option, definitely go and switch it to 4K now before the, uh, before the show begins. And here's me getting off in London, ready to go towards the event at the Royal National Hotel. The event's actually on every four months, so the next one is on in June, I believe, or July. So maybe every three months. So here we go. I did manage to get a little bit of footage from the show. It did get incredibly busy, as always. So the bits you're seeing now are actually from the end of the event, where I could actually move around a little bit better, at least. Uh, so what I'm going to do here while I'm walking around with the camera, maybe point out some interesting finds, some things that I probably missed while I was there and probably will regret not getting. Um, as always, and it was it was an incredible event. I really, really enjoyed it, and I met some fantastic people too. I met one of my friends on Twitter, so that was great, and I also met up with the guy who writes Hyperplay RPG. Um, he's in the video a bit later on, selling his magazine a bit, and I was also spotted by a few people who watched me on YouTube, which was amazing, so thank you very much for coming to say hi to me, everyone who... Uh, who brought, who brought that up, that was, that was really cool and it's great to know that you guys are enjoying my videos, it really makes me want to make more of them. So here we go to the first stall of the event, this one was Retro Plushy Games, one of my favourite stalls. They always have some really great uh, Mega Drive stuff, especially on the display at the back. I won't be really talking about what I picked up at the show here, I'm saving that for the pickups video. There you can see some SNES and N64 games and a little box of GameCube games here and Bionic Commando on the NES 23 pound, that's not bad um, I have to say sorry if the um, camera angles aren't the best I was trying to just hold my phone and uh, look around and it was kind of awkward just because of how crowded it was so I do apologise if any of this is slightly hard to watch there we go, so some more N64 games there I actually found Chameleon Twist 2, which is a game that I've been looking for for a long time, and it was only 20 quid. I was actually really surprised, because last time I saw it, in the box, it was about 200. So that was a really big surprise to find it for only 20, so I picked that one up straight away. There I just caught a glimpse of Mega Man 2 in the box, 40 quid, pretty good. Tonic Trouble, that was one I was excited to find last time at the event. It's getting really hard to actually buy games now, just because of how many I've got. Wiz and Liz, that was one that I was looking for. If anyone's played Wiz and Liz on the Mega Drive, let me know. Let me know if it's any good. Forgotten Worlds, that's a good game. Fatal Fury, of course. And some blue box games there. I saw Mickey Mania, that was one I was looking for as well. So, on this section we have some SNES games from Press Start Gaming. Really good store this one was. They were actually very reasonably priced. Uh, let's see what I can see. There's Turrican at the back there, but that was an expensive one. Super Mario World for 15 not bad. Nothing too exciting though. Mickey Mania again, the SNES one, 8 quid there. Pretty good. And some more Mega Drive games here. And some Master System games. I wasn't really looking for any... Oh, that's quite expensive, that Ninja Gaiden. 45 quid. 85 for Res as well. Wow. The prices of games have gone up considerably since, uh, since I managed to pick a lot of them ones up. Uh, this was quite cool actually, I'm a bit sad I didn't get some more footage, there were some nice signs, like Game Boy and GameCube signs and stuff, and there was me trying to push through someone's shoulders to have a look at the store. Just saw Lost Vikings there again for the Mega Drive, Fantastic Dizzy, that's a, a great game made here in the UK, Comic Zone, that's one I don't actually have on the Mega Drive, I've got it on the PC, so maybe I'll look at Comic Zone uh, for a future one of these. Uh, a quick look at some Sega Saturn and some Mega CD games. Not really in the market for Saturn or Mega CD at the minute, but maybe in the future. My Mega CD doesn't work, so that's why I'm not really that interested in collecting for it at, at this time anyway. Uh, just wait for the camera to catch back up. So what we got here? A box full of NES games. Loads of NES games, actually. Rad Racer 2, I didn't actually realise there was a second one. Digger, Digger T-Rock, one of Rare's earlier games. Section Z, I was looking at that one. Nothing too exciting, I don't usually... F oh, there is uh, Little Nemo, Dream Master, 9 quid, that's pretty good. Lemmings on the NES, another one I didn't realise was on the NES there. Quite a lot of Konami games. 
I do sort of like collecting for the NES, but really I'm more into the 16-bit systems. So here's a bit more Mega Drive. Aero the Acrobat 2, that's one I really want. I was tempted to get that. I'm sorry that it's a bit out of shot there. I think it was 45, but it didn't have the manual. So if I was going to get it, I'd rather have it complete. And I also found Aero the Acrobat 1 on the SNES, which is another game that I really want. And I was kind of tempted to pick that one up too, but I didn't in the end. For some reason. Well, I guess I ran out of money. I did spend quite a bit, which you'll see in the pickups video a bit later on. So here's some boxed SNES games. It's always great to see boxed SNES games. There it is, that's what I was talking about a minute ago, Aero the Acrobat. I think it was 30, but again, it didn't have the manual with it. I really should have got it though, because that was a really good price for Aero, Aero the Acrobat. Another world up there, Top Gear, I hear is a good SNES racing game. Cannon Fodder, another game I don't have. Donkey Kong Country, classic. What's over there? Goof Troop, Pack in Time, Blues Brothers, Mortal Kombat. Nothing super exciting. Usually the good stuff's on the back of the stores. Uh, I'm going to try and squeeze in here. What's in here? Some N64 games. V Rally. I don't actually have V Rally, but I heard it's a really good one for the N64. Uh, here we have some Game Boy Advance, or not. I just went away from them. There were some good GBA games in there actually, hopefully I go back a bit later. So, uh, the hall was a bit bigger this time actually, it actually opened up into a second area, which is where I'm heading now. There wasn't too many people here. This was something really interesting, I don't know if this is official or not, I don't think it is. It didn't look official anyway. Bubble and Bobble for the Mega Drive. If anyone knows anything about it, let me know because I've never actually seen it on the Mega Drive before. Anything else good? Just trying to pick up on everything. Mario Party. There was a few good N64 games there. Donkey Kong 64. Goemon, Mystical Ninja. A game that I really want. Um, I didn't get it in the end. I probably should have. It was one that I was looking for. Here's a bit more. Some GameCube, some PS1. I'm not really into PS1 collecting much. Just saw Buster Move 3 there. A lot of these stalls actually, like you just saw there, had more boxes underneath the tables. There's Turrican for the uh, Game Boy. Adventure Island with a hor horrible box art, if I put that in the camera. No, I didn't. I hate the box art for Adventure Island, it's so ugly. Uh, a few loose SNES games, there were some Japanese ones there as well. There's Tetris 2 for a fiver. I actually really like Tetris 2, it's one of my favourite puzzle games. It's very different to the original Tetris. Uh, moving on, there's some retro magazines down there. I picked up some of the Dreamcast ones. I actually really wish that I'd gone back and got some of the Nintendo Magazine system ones that were in a different box. But unfortunately, by the time I'd got back, they'd all gone. So I kind of missed my chance for that one. I love collecting old retro magazines. I've got hundreds of them uh, back in my parents' house. Here's a little box full of Japanese Game Boy games. I see Saga 2 there. I think they had Saga 1 and 3 as well, but... I'd really rather get the English versions as Final Fantasy Legend instead. I was looking for the Final Fantasy Legend games, but I didn't actually find any. There's Wario Blast, Alleyway, that's a great game. There's the other Saga game there. Uh, what else? Nothing that interesting. Tamagotchi, James Bond. Yeah, sorry about this camera angle. Really couldn't focus on two things at once. Now some PS1. Ah, here's some of the rarer stuff at the back. You can see there, Super Probotector in a box. Super Pang. There's an Animal Crossing soundtrack just hanging around. Really cool. It's a shame I didn't get some more footage of that store actually. They had some really good games. But it was just really busy. Hopefully next time I go I'll try a bit harder to get some better footage. There we go, I managed to find a little spot there. If you see anything interesting, let me know. If you think any of the prices are good or bad, let me know as well. Uh, I think everything was fairly reasonably priced. There was Wiz and Liz again, 15. Pretty good. You can see two Jet Force Geminis there. Wonder Boy 3, great Mega Drive game. Mega Barman. Uh, what else have we got? Carmageddon 64. Scars, I've never actually played that. I hear it's a fairly good racing game. There's some more SNES and NES games. Not heard of this one, Blue Shadow by Taito. I thought I knew most of Taito's games, so that's one that's just slipped past me for whatever reason. There's Faxanadu, uh, a lot of people's favourite RPG adventure game on the NES. So here's some unboxed SNES games. Dawn Patrol, I haven't got that one. 
Uh, what's in this one? Choplifter, I hear they're quite good. Equinox, I picked that one up at a different store. We got a really good deal on that, thanks to the guys at Hyperplay. There's Rainbow Islands for the NES, that's a really great game. Uh, Rad Racer, Solar Jetman, another one of Rare's early classics. There's Klex, Thunder, uh, Super Thunder Blade, Pit Fighter. Nothing too exciting, most of the exciting games are at the back of the store usually. There's Gynog or Gynu for the Mega Drive, that's a great one. Gauntlet 2, Boy and His Blob, Wizards and Warriors. Well, there's just so many great games, I could I could literally spend a whole week looking through all this stuff and not get bored. R-Type for the Master System, that's one I haven't got that I, heard, that I hear is really good. Only 14 quid as well, oh, maybe I should have picked that one up. And we have found some SNES games. Lemmings there for the SNES, Vortex at the back. There's some good GBA games and Game Boy games over there. There's Dokupon, uh, Mario Tennis for the Virtual Boy, which is really cool. Just saw Ease 3, Wonders of Ease there. Oh my god, I can't believe I missed that one. Damn it. <laughs> I really want Wonders of Ease for the Turbo Graphics. I've only got it on the SNES, but I'd love to have the Turbo Graphics version. And here we have some NES games. So many great games on the NES, but the problem is I already have most of the good ones. These were really cool actually, these Japanese Crash Bandicoot games for the PlayStation. I really love the cover art on them. So much better than what we've got. There's UN Squadron, one of the games that I was looking for. Did I pick it up or not? You'll have to stay tuned and watch the pickups video later in the week. Mario RPG as well, that was another one I was looking for. Although if I was to get that, I'd definitely get it in the box. I wouldn't want a loose cart. I can see in the background there, Yoshi's Universal Gravitation, uh, Metal Slug Advance, Tetris 2 in the box. Donkey Kong, Doom 64, Snowboard Kids, Warrior, Warrior Land 2, some really great games at this store. This was probably one of my favourite little ones to flick around. So the Toki Tori there for the Game Boy Color, uh, Zelda, Oracle of Ages, Gift. I had Gift on the computer, I've never played it on the Game Boy though. Nothing too exciting there, there's Wave Race, there's um, Millipede and Centipede was it? Adventure Island again. Without the box, thankfully. That's one game that I wouldn't want the box for. A few loose games there. There's Perfect Dark with the Rumble Pack for the Game Boy. Really cool. And now we are looking at some Master System games. Now, this store was amazing. It was literally from one side of the room to the other. Had like five or six boxes like this full of Master System and then another five or six full of Mega Drive. You can see it there. Crazy. And they were all stacked up at the back as well. Definitely one of my favourite ones to have a look around on. And they had some really rare games at the back as well. Including a few that I was after but didn't quite have the money to pick up. So you can see there, Pulse Man. Really, really great game. Made by uh, Game Freak. The creators of Pokemon. Really surprising. Um, it's not the original though. That was a that was a repro car. The original would be about 150 at, at minimum. Yeah, crazy prices for some of these. There's Lost Vikings, the game that I was looking for on the SNES. I saw the Mega Drive one everywhere, but not so much the SNES one. The Smurfs game there, Claps, Dynamite Heady, that's a that's a really good game for the Mega Drive. Risky Woods, another good game. Adam's Family, Primal Rage, that one's pretty cool. Uh, what's in here? Mega Games 2, that's a brilliant set if you're just getting into the Mega Drive. I definitely recommend getting Mega Games 2. It's got three great multiplayer games on there. There's uh, Fantasia at the top. Not Tales of Fantasia, that's something completely different. Earthworm Jim, I just saw down there. Some Sonic the Hedgehog. Classic. Mega Drive has so many classic games. It's really one of the best systems ever. I can just buy Uni Rally behind that person's back there. I don't know what I was doing with the camera here. I think I must have not realised it was still running. This is a bit better, some loose Game Boy games. There's Kirby's Block Ball, uh, Wave Race again. Some SNES games here. Uh, can't see anything that really stands out. Pack Attack maybe, probably the best one there. A nice Mega CD, a Mega Drive Mark 1. I don't actually have the Mark 1, I only have the Mark 2, so I'd really like to get that one day. There's some PS1 and PS2 games. I don't really spend too much time looking at PlayStation stuff, but if you see anything you like, leave it in the comments. 
Um, if you leave some recommendations, maybe I'll try and get into PlayStation collecting at some point in the future. There's a few controllers down there. I was looking for a SNES controller, but they were all just a bit too expensive, really, for me. Uh, have I found an opening? Yes, there we go. Oh, it's just Blu-rays. Carry on. Let's see what's on this side. More SNES games, woo! I love it when all the SNES games are lined up like that. It's just so exciting just to just to see them all there. I couldn't really get in, I'm just waiting for my chance. Here we go. There's Mickey Mania, a game that I really want on the SNES actually. Super R-Type, uh, Adventure Island, Paperboy, Dragon's Lair. Loads of really good games on this store. One of the best stores. Uh, and some N64 games as well. And a few American SNES games I just noticed there. Uh, just one or two. There's quite a lot of Game Gear games at the event actually as well. So maybe in the future I'll try and get more into Game Gear collecting. Not to play on the original system because I hate the actual Game Gear itself. But you can play Game Gear games on the Retro Freak now with an adapter. So I could get some games and play them on that. Possibly. But it's not really something I've looked into. And they're super cheap so I'm not really in any rush to pick them up. There we go, a little bit of a look at the back. There were some custom Game Boys back there. I think some of them had backlights and some of them were just custom cases and stuff. This was pretty interesting to see actually, some in television games. You don't usually see in television games around a lot. Tron Deadly Discs. I wish I had an in television actually, maybe that's something I could try and find in the future. Uh, I can see Metropolis Street Racer there on the Dreamcast. Really good racing game. Nothing else too exciting, some Sonic Adventures. Overpriced really, Sonic Adventures shouldn't be more than a few quid really. Super common game. There's a random Game & Watch on there, that's pretty cool to see. A few Mega Drive games there, a few Japanese ones. If you know what they are, leave a comment. I'm not really sure what they were, I didn't actually uh, have a look that much. It's kind of rare to find Japanese Mega Drive games, so it's always worth having a look. What's not so rare is Japanese SNES games or Super Famicom games. There was hundreds of these. There was a whole store that just specialised in Japanese games. You can see there's a load of Dreamcast uh, PC Engine games as well. The annoying thing about PC Engine games, you really need to know what you're looking for beforehand because they never have any, um, they never have any screenshots on the back, so it's really hard to actually figure out what you're looking at. Or just take a lucky guess and see if the game's any good or not when you get back. But some of them can be kind of pricey, so it's probably best to do your research beforehand if you're trying to get into PC Engine collecting. Which I kind of am, and I do have a big list, but again, as it's only got Hiragana and Katakana on the side, it can be really difficult to actually pick the games out, even if you know which ones you're looking for. And there was a few Japanese Mega CD games there. There's Parodius for the PC Engine. Really cool game, I love the Parodius series. Uh, what else was I saying? There was a few... Um, Neo Geo CD games as well. I don't actually have a Neo Geo CD, but that's maybe something I could look into in the future as well. They had some big Neo Geo box games as well, which was pretty cool. Uh, some AES and some MVS games. Here's some of the backlit Game Boys and the Game Boy Advance up there as well. I love the different colour schemes for these, but to be honest, I prefer the Game Boy Pocket over the Game Boy Original. Uh, that's why I picked up the backlit Game Boy Pocket at the last event I was at. There's Punch Out for the NES for 18, that was pretty good. Uh, what else is there? Nothing too exciting, really. I've got most of these ones. There's only a few that I'm really interested in on the NES. Totally rad, I don't really know much about that one. And Bayo Billy as well, I see that one around quite a lot. Here's a little display cabinet with some more rare games in it. Literally, Perfect Dark and Don Kong Country there. Uh, what's underneath? It's kind of hard to see here, it's quite dark. Ghouls and Ghosts, Wonder Boy for their Master System, two really great games there. Toy Story. I've only played the SNES Toy Story, but if the Mega Drive one is anything like the SNES one, then it's a fantastic game. Some rare GameCube games up there. Chibi Robo, Fire Emblem. All of them are crazy prices now, so I really wouldn't recommend getting into GameCube collecting at the moment. It's just too expensive. I think Fire Emblem was like 110 quid or something. You can see Rez up there for 90. That's even more expensive. Here's some of my favourite SNES games. One of my favourite stalls for SNES games. And some NES games up the top here. I can see Mega Man 1, 2, 3 and 4. 
I really wanted to get Mega Man 1, but it was always just a bit too expensive. There was Bionic Commando up there, one of the games that I was looking for. Unfortunately, that was a bit too expensive for me as well at the time. I think they were asking 40 quid for it, which was a bit crazy, really. I wasn't expecting to pay any more than about 15, really. Just having a quick flick through some Game Boy Advance games. There's never really anything that interesting in these boxes. The interest in GBA games are usually on the back, but that's only because I've got all the kind of affordable ones. So you can see Spyro 2 there, one of the Sonic Adventure games, Sonic Advance games, I mean, there's Banjo Pilot. So it's not like you can't get good GBA games, it's just the ones that I'm looking for are really hard to find. Here's Mystical Ninja starring Goemon in the box. Was really looking for the SNES one, that's the N64 one there. Uh, next time I go to an event though, I'll definitely pick up the N64 one. There's Kick on Cubicle, there's uh, Bubble Bubble. I love early Taito games, I'm sure you know that already. Yeah, really love early Taito games. Mega Man 2 in the box. Shame it wasn't the first one, I really want to get the first one in the box. What's that there? Pro Protector 25? That's pretty good actually. Maybe I shouldn't have put that one back. Parasol Stars? Yeah, really good selection in that one. A few GameCube games there. I'm not really after many GameCube games. I've already got most of the ones that I want. And the ones that I do want are probably all over 100 quid by now. Having a flip through some of the Game Boy games here. Let me know if you spot anything that interests you. There's Pokemon Trading Card game there, which is really good. I was trying to look through the Game Boy Color games, trying to find the other Bionic Commando, but I didn't find that one anywhere. I only found the original Game Boy one, but it was just too expensive. There's the Pokemon games, as always. Uh, Mickey Mouse game there, Bugs Bunny, Game & Watch Gallery, they're always really fun. Mole Mania, game actually made by Miyamoto. A very unheard of game, so I'm not really sure why that one hasn't become rare. I guess just because people don't really know anything about it. There's BC Kid, or Bonk, as he's known in America. Not really sure what the Game Boy one's like. Maybe I should have picked that up as well just to have a look. I did get some really good Game Boy games though, so definitely look forward to them in the pickups video that I do at the end of this. Yeah, nothing else too interesting there. Killer Instinct. Nothing really interesting. I was really trying to find Bionic Commando, like I said, but I'm not really that keen on the actual Game Boy Color games because you can't play them on the SNES for one thing. You can't play them on the Game Boy Pocket and the colour is not that great anyway. And it did seem like there was quite a lot of shovelware on the Game Boy Colour. Or maybe that's just me being a bit biased towards the original, I'm not really sure. So, having another walk around here. Uh, what have we got here? More SNES games! If you see anything interesting, as always, let me know. There's Battletoads and Turrican for the NES. They had some really good NES games up here. N64 there for 45 some PlayStation 1 games. I saw Cooler World there. If you want me to focus on a few more modern systems, because I'm really just focusing on 8 and 16 bit stuff here, but uh, for the next event in July, if you want me to focus on some more PlayStation kind of things, definitely let me know. Just saw Poochie Carrot there for the Game Boy Color. That's a game I love on the PlayStation, so I really wonder what the Game Boy Color version's like in comparison. Mega Man Extreme 2 there. There's a few good games on the Game Boy Color. I have to give it some credit. Alleyway. Uh, no, nothing interesting there. Football game. Just shovelware. Uh, yeah, Dark Arena. That's one that I've been looking for for a while on the original Game Boy. One of the very first uh, first person shooters for the system. I was having another look at Poochie Carrot there. I really should have picked it up. I even picked it up there, but I must have put it back at some point. I'm kind of kicking myself about that now. No, don't do it! Oh, so annoying watching this back and seeing all the things I should have got. Need for Speed there as well, I think it's Porsche Unleashed. Um, that's the game that I want for Game Boy. I do like the Need for Speed games, even though they're a bit generic. Anything good there? Paperboy, Smash Bros, Conker's Bad Fur Day for 100, cart only. Anything good in the box at the back? There's Blast Corpse, Tetrisphere, Snowboard Kids, that's a brilliant game. If you've got friends, then definitely you get Snowboard Kids. There's Chameleon Twist 2 again for 35 there. And just a quick zoom in at some of the more expensive Mega Drive games. Ristar up there for 55 Outrun 3D, that one's really cool to see. Uh, it'd be really good if you could get the 3D glasses for it and actually play it properly, but I think they're really hard to come by these days. 
There's Castlevania Bloodlines, Pro Protector for 140. I actually saw it for a lot more than that at the event, so 140 is not too bad actually. There's a quick look at some more rarer games. There's DuckTales 2 that I just caught a glimpse of. I really need to try and be a bit slower with the camera, it's moving a bit fast. Here's some Game Gear games that I was looking at. I don't really know what to pick up for the Game Boy, or for the Game Gear. I haven't really looked at what's good and what's not. But the prices were all really cheap, so maybe I should have picked a few up anyway. Streets of Rage there, Alien 3. The Game Gear to me just seems like a stripped down version of the Mega Drive with the sort of games that it's got anyway. I think we're coming towards the end now. Here's some PS1 games. I'll very quickly skim over these. Just for you guys who were more into the PS1, you can see Mega Man X3 there for 100 quid. Not bad, but uh, I really wish the Mega Man games weren't so expensive, because I'd love to have the whole set, but it's just completely insane, the prices for some of them. Here's some rare Sega Saturn games up there, Mr. Bones for 90. Here, that one's really good, actually. I should probably try and look into collecting a few of the more obscure Saturn games, because I do really like the Saturn, but it's just gathering dust in the minute. There's Bubba and Sticks. For some reason I have the box for that, but not the actual cart. There's two copies of Ristar there. I'm not sure why they were different prices. Pinocchio for the Mega Drive. That's one that I picked up at the last event. But unfortunately you can't play because I've lost the wires for the Mega Drive. Which is a bit annoying. Uh, some Famicom games in a random box on the floor. I didn't pick any up, but it's always cool to see. I just love the, the Famicom carts. They're so... Colourful, compared to what we got over here, which is just grey. So yeah, it's really nice to see some Famicom games. But I don't really know that much about the Famicom, so if anyone wants to give me any recommendations for Famicom collecting, then definitely feel free to let me know. Um, the only ones I've really picked up are just random ones I found in Japan, or the ones that I showed off in the, uh, in the last pickups video, based on what I'd read from the untold history of Japanese game developers. There were some really great games here as well for the Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance. I didn't really spend too long looking through these because they were on the floor next to the entrance, so it was kind of awkward to actually um, sit there and have a look through. There was Final Fantasy 1 and 2 for the GBA, and there was loads of boxes here. It wasn't even possible to get through some of them. Here's a quick look at some Japanese Saturn games for any of you Japanese Saturn collectors out there. There's a Bomberman game. If you know any good Japanese Saturn games, definitely let me know because I'm not too clued in on the whole Saturn, PlayStation, Dreamcast era. I'm trying to get more into it and next time I go to Japan I'm probably mostly going to be looking at Dreamcast and Saturn stuff. But that's basically because I've found all the games that I want for the 16-bit systems in Japan really. So looking forward to that. I just zoomed in there because I found the F-Zero X expansion kit. There wasn't actually a 64 DD system, but it's always cool to see DD games when you can. There's a few rare GBA games up there. A few more SNES games here. There's Super Adventure Island, uh, Looney Tunes, Uni Rally. Uni Rally's really cool. If you haven't played Uni Rally, you definitely should play that. A few N64 games there, nothing too exciting. I've pretty much got all the N64 games that I want these days. And here's Hyperplay, RPG magazine. I'll let him introduce himself and in the magazine for you, so just listen to this. Yeah, go on. Stop it, stop it to us. Hyperplay <laughs> RPG, Blast from the Past, Retro RPG Magazine, imprint only, bringing back the love of Superplay, Mean Machines game fan. Basically, if you love games, especially RPGs, you need Hyperplay RPG. Get it from hyperplayrpg.com. Perfect. It's true, you do need Hyperplay RPG, it's a brilliant magazine. I've read through all of their issues so far and he actually mentioned this channel in the last issue, which was really great, so thank you very much for that. Um, I just saw a last story there, I think he was selling some of his collection, and on this store here there was a few of the Neo Geo games, and a lot of boxed SNES games, some really rare ones there. There was the original Lufia, which is a game I really want, but it was 100 quid. I know that's a lot cheaper than what I paid for the second one, but I still couldn't quite afford it. Well, I could, but I wanted to pick up a few more games. Maybe next time. There's quite a lot of really expensive SNES games that I want, to be honest. Dreamcast is a lot more affordable, but unfortunately for me, a lot less interesting as well. I always kind of associate Dreamcast with being really cheap, just because GameStation was selling them all off for like 
two pound each or three for a fiver or something back in the day. So I just amassed loads of Dreamcast games through GameStation when they were still around. Here's a few GameCube games here. Dark Summit, that's one that I've always wanted for a while, but I see it everywhere, so I just haven't picked it up yet. Uh, San Francisco Rush there at Stream G, some really good games, but unfortunately I've already got all of them. It is getting really hard to actually go game shopping now, just because of how big my collection's becoming. Here's some Game Boy Advance games in the box. Nothing really exciting there. Um, again, nothing really exciting that I don't already have. It's kind of a shame because looking through this I would have got excited about some of these at some point in the past. But I've got them now so there's just nothing to be excited about when I see it. So There's some DS games. I didn't really spend too long looking at the DS games. And that about wraps the video up. That's all the footage that I've got here. So thank you very much for watching. I hope this was entertaining. I, I know these kind of videos aren't for everyone. So let me know what you thought of the event, if you were there, leave a comment and uh, I'd love to meet you next time if you're going to be at the next one. So thank you very much for watching, stay tuned for my pickups video coming later in the week and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.